Um, so could you please introduce yourself and uh, tell us what company you're with? Yeah, my name is uh, Jason Parks. I work at Sony Online in San Diego and I've uh, been a part of Sony Online and Sony Computer making PlayStation games and uh, PC games for a dozen years or more now. Fantastic. Uh, when did you first realize that you were morphing into a technical artist from your original role? And what was that role? Uh, well, I was originally in motion capture, so I kind of did a lot of technical work in the early days of motion capture, though the tech artist role wasn't really around. Uh, I did know somebody who kind of mentioned, uh, well, about riggers, really, when rigging got involved. And so I made the conscious choice to move over to more Maya and a cinematics team and do rigging, character rigging. And that's when mail scripting basically comes involved. And as soon as you start writing your first scripts, you, you know, you could define that as the time when you're becoming a technical artist. Okay. Uh, can you provide an example from a project you worked on that required your specific skills as a technical artist to solve? Well, everything since then. That was, uh, <laughs> you know, eight years ago. But, uh, well, it was, like I said, rigging was, uh, got me down that line. So everything rigging, you really don't want to rig by hand. Once you don't rig anything once, you want to put it into a script form. And so uh, all the rigging I've done, that's still my specialty, my, my, my true love, really. So, um all the, uh, you know, all the rigging I do is all, all script-based and technical, but, uh, you know, animation also, anything, anything animation and getting down to the skeletal level, whether you're dealing with mocap or, or setting up skeletons, that's all technical work in itself, even if you're just not even writing tools or code, you're, you're, you have to pay, you know, real close attention to the, to the, the underlying what's happening in the animation. Okay. Um, so you came to the TA role primarily from the, the art side? Yeah, and, and well, like I said, I <coughs> I was in doing motion capture, which was kind of art. I mean, some people, you know, what was it called? The Devil's Rotoscope back in the day. Now it's fully accepted, but back in the day it was it was kind of a stigma. So, because it wasn't really art, it was a very technical side of getting, like, you know, animation into the into the industry. But, yeah, I mean, I was an artist. I used the tools. I worked on the animation. I made it look better and did all the, the cleaning of those assets. So, uh, but, you know, it wasn't trained... You know, classically as an artist, modeling, i.e., or, or textures or anything like that. Um, okay. But yeah, t more on the animation side then, I guess, as from an artist side. Okay, so did you have to uh, teach yourself, you know, to engage in self directed learning to become an effective TA? And what sorts of things did you teach yourself? Yeah, I, you know, I'm pretty much self taught. Uh, you know, y y you get a job, and I worked for a, a guy who knew motion capture really well, and he taught me what he knew, and then, you know, and once you've learned that and you're doing your work, you, you teach yourself more and you just keep digging and digging. And then uh, I guess I taught myself scripting. But then again, you're always working off of other people. So back in the uh, early 2000s, I guess, it was the uh, master classes, the Maya uh, alias back in the day, now Autodesk master classes that had the, the best uh, teaching work out there. So essentially, you know, you teach yourself, but you've got to go get the knowledge yourself, whether it's a you know on DVD or something online, and, and you, you find the experts, and then you, you, you go through it, and you learn, and you, you know, that's how you pretty much teach yourself. Um, so yeah, and then all the, all the scripting, too, is pretty much self-taught. There's not a lot of courses on that. There, I've written a couple, and there's some out there, but you pretty much have to teach yourself on how to do the code, if you, unless you go to get code at school. Okay. Um, so along those lines, what low-level technical concepts did you have to grok to really become an effective TA? Like, what were the, the hurdles that you had to kind of cross? My area was skeletons and animation. So, the, like I mentioned earlier, the low-level stuff was, you know, the, the particulars of skeleton layout, joint orientation, um, animation, Euler curves, uh, you know, the XYZ curves, and, and right. how that works in all the pieces of software out there, essentially, my mocap and all that stuff. So that's my kind of area of especially of, uh, of low-level tech art. Okay. So uh, along those lines, like with Euler curves and, and all of that, um, uh, what types of mathematics do you use kind of on a day-to-day -day basis? And like, did you have to teach yourself those? And I do pretty minimal because I, I, I don't have a CS degree. I kind of wish I did to, to, to offhand know a lot more of that knowledge. Though, you know, you can look it up in books. So there's a couple of my, like my programming books that I look up to learn the basic vector stuff. Vector is what you definitely want to know. Um, you know, all the dot product and cross product and how, how to get that stuff. And, and transformation matrices, that's what it's pretty much all about. It's not my strong suit. When I look at that, I, I kind of steer clear and do what minimal I can. I tend to actually hack it. I'm, I mean, I'm pretty good at math, but not, not on a programmer level. So I'm more of a visual guy. So what I do is I hack it by using visual representations of the math, i.e. like locators. So you can use locators and basic objects in your 3D apps. 
and I'll like um, I'll use those to represent my transformation matrices and use like rigging tricks to kind of do the math instead of having to do it in code. So for the benefit of uh, students who might not have been working with, with these 3D tools yet, a locator is what exactly? It's a basic transformation object in, in any DCC app that has a world space and orientation. Okay. And so it's a, it's, it's, the, you know, it's a fundamental form of a transformation matrix, which is essentially a stack of transformations that happen to objects. That's how all the calculations and everything happens in a DCC app okay. goes. And it's usually the only programmer types that kind of can really, you know, figure out how that, like reverse engineer the transformation matrix back and forth. But the, you can do it if you're kind of technical or more on the art side, you can do it with these locators or other basic, even just like a sphere or a box or like an arrow, you put an arrow in your scene and you can do that a lot. You can start looking at your rotation tables and, and uh, <clears throat> figure that out. It's especially important with joints because joints and bones, it can be represented in a lot of different ways. And joints typically, like especially in Maya, have three different rotation transformation matrices just on the one joint. There's the joint itself, there's like it's pointing to its child, and then there's like an offset number you can use in between. And that stuff can get really tricky. Um, but, uh, so, you know, you know, matrix knowledge is, is, is good to have for all that stuff. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, you came from the art side, but were there additional artistic principles that you also had to kind of come up to speed with as the uh, industry was changing? Uh, yeah, you know, I... I try to, you know, you try to learn as much as you can about textures and shaders, and that's a whole other kind of language and world. Um, modeling, you know, you get, you get to, I, I learned plenty of the, all the modeling tricks, everything about verts, and back in the day when NURBS, well, it was, used to be kind of NURBS before polys, now it's not polys, but then when subdivision surfaces were, were coming out, kind of learning that lingo and how those geometries are made up in your app is good to know, but nobody, everybody just uses polys in games, so, but, you know learning how that stuff works. Um, <clears throat> UV, tech, UV stuff was important to learn. That's, you know, uh, I tend to, I tend to kind of pass on like the texture UV shader work to a technical artist who's more familiar with that background, like Lee Christian, so my, my partner is, um, he, they, he takes on that area. So I tend to focus more on the skeleton animation. The problem is, is it's so big you can't really learn, you can't be a specialist on all those things. So I'm always wanting to learn more about that, but there's just so much to low, know in just the kind of areas that I'm interested in. You kind of want to focus them too, but it is good to have broad knowledge. The one little area I have expanded is trying to understand the UV space a little bit better. That's a little bit abstract. That's basically texture space and how that works. Um, but there's a lot of kind of UV work and normals and that kind of stuff and geometry that, that are, are pretty common in the game pipeline. So I've had to teach myself a little bit of that. Wow. That's just, there's so much to know. There is. It's <laughs> you know, big. It's, it's, it's too big. Yeah, that's what I've learned is this just I would like to know it all, but it's too big to learn it all. So you got to pick something. you got to focus. So that makes this next question really yeah. important and difficult. If, there's, if there was one thing that game educators needed to know uh, for the future generation of tech artists, what would it be that you would want them to know. Oh, that's easy, actually. Um, and it has to do with what I'll be talking about later in the week. And that is, uh, oh, my opinion is Python. Okay. My opponent said, despite what they just talked about, the Tech Art Bootcamp is any one language. You can learn all the languages. Python, C Sharp, any of the good ones uh, that they mentioned um, are important. Uh, multiple languages, like I said, is very key. It's really good to do, too. But um, the glue for all of them these days is Python. It's the main language that most of the DCC apps are using, direct content creation, yeah. digital content creation, all the 3D apps that they're using. Uh, it's also generic. It plugs into everything else in your pipeline and systems, databases, XML, web servers, email, everything you yeah. want it to do, every, um, like a, some of the other languages. Um, but it's essentially, it has all the momentum behind it, and you can't go wrong knowing it. Uh, you can use it for your own tools, you can use it to plug in and, and uh, modify every other tool. It's a simple language to get going on, um, but it's object oriented and it'll scale as high as you want it to go. Okay. Uh, so for me, uh, that is the, the tool of choice to have uh, under your belt. Um, and you know, um, that's what my, but you know, I'm partial, that's what my talk is going to be about, is like right. use Python, it's going to make your life uh, worthwhile. So I, I, I teach Python. Okay, that that's that's wonderful. Actually, um, I've, it, a lot of bang for your buck with that language. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you can't go wrong. You won't yeah. not use it. We'll put it that so, way. Okay. You can always you, you know, you'll use all the other languages. Good, depending on what suite you land on, whether you, they're using Max or not, and you have to use 
C sharp or some of the kind of basic scripting and meld scripting was a great way to get going. I mean, you know, can't go wrong with there and, and all the other languages. But um, Python is one that's pretty much used by everybody. Okay. So you'll use it somewhere. At, okay. At, yeah, almost, at almost every company, if not at any other company. I mean, most of the world's servers, all the Google stuff is written in Python. It's it's everywhere. Okay. Uh, any other things that you just want to say that I had to know to ask a question about? <laughs> things that, that need to get out there? Um, this is, you know, just a great learning experience. I really appreciate the time you've taken. Yeah, sure. But, um, well, coming to GDC is pretty darn valuable. It's right. worth, I know it's expensive, but it's really worth the money. I go every year, even if my company can't afford to pay me, I definitely come. And now it's bigger and better than ever. I mean, this, this boot camp is, is awesome. This is what we've been trying to say for half a dozen years now. And, and uh, now we may actually have some momentum behind us. And there's actually job listings for tech artists, a lot of them, which is nice. It used to be we had to like read between the lines and find jobs that we knew were tech art jobs, but they didn't, they weren't listed that way. So, um, so you know, it, uh, you're lucky if you're getting into tech art now because there's lots and lots of resources. There's there's uh, a good amount of uh, very senior TAs that are experts, and they're all super super helpful. Go to the websites, forums, and uh, the roundtables and everything here at GDC. So you have lots of free. All the answers are there. There's a you know at techartist.org every month. There's a thread. How do I get started? And it's all the people weighing in on the same amount. So all the data is there. It's basically just hard work. All you have to do is look out there, figure out what languages you want to learn, pick your specialty, and uh, and then just start putting in the hours. It's the, I mean, the, 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 the path is laid right out there for you, and the need is immense out there. Uh, like I said, I guess there's a good amount of junior TAs coming into the industry. Um, <clears throat> which is good to get them to get them started, but um, and you can't. Everybody wants senior though, but you can't get that unless you've been doing it. So you got to start somewhere. But uh, uh, you know, it's as easy as it's ever been. I guess. I guess on the double-edged sword is there's more tech artists out there like trying to clamor for positions. But um, you know, I think it's far better knowing that there's a path there for you guys to you know get going. Okay, that's that's fantastic. Thank you very You're much. Well, man.